Hi there and welcome back to the Floss Marketing School. In this video, we are going to see how we can install a Metabase on a real server. So in a previous video, I was explaining you how you can install it locally. So it was really simple. It was just a Java file uh, to load. But when it comes to uh, install it on a real server, then it's, uh, of course, uh, far more technical. Uh, the huge advantage of hosting it um, online is that uh, after that, you can uh, share uh, your uh, your dashboard. So that's, uh, that's a good example. And of course, uh, you can collaborate. So you can have uh, several users and then you can, of course, uh, play with all the data. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Lucas Wrinkler because without him I wouldn't be able to make this tutorial and uh, this tutorial actually is just going to be a set of uh, instructions because I already installed it so I'm not going to make like a real uh, demo of all the install but I will guide you through <coughs> the different uh, process. So uh, the first thing that you have to know is when you start to want to install a Metabase on, uh, on your own, you will see that uh, Metabase documentation is providing you three ways to install it. So it's either by using AWS. So AWS means that uh, you're going to send at the end of the day your data to uh, Amazon, or at least uh, uh, you will have all your combinations of data which will be stored on uh, Amazon uh, Web Services. That's kind of the same thing. It's a bit different with Heroku, but to me, that's a bit the same. And uh, if you go through Docker, which is a free software in order to easily install complicated app, uh, as it's a free software, uh, well, you can, of course, choose the server of your choice. And this is exactly uh, what I'm showing uh, here today. So how you can install it on your own server and have a full control over your data. The official documentation in order to uh, know how to run Metabase is uh, located here. But uh, when you go through it, if you are a dummy like myself, you will probably not be able uh, to do it on your own. So that's why I'm, um, I asked to my uh, friend Lucas to explain me how to do it uh, from scratch. And this is what I'm describing here. So first of all, what you need to do is that you need to connect uh, to your server in SSH. So in order to connect in SSH, you just need to perform within one of your terminal SSH, then your identifier, then uh, the IP address where your uh, server is located. Then once uh, you have done so, you need uh, to create on uh, your uh, at the root level of your server a directory, which will be named uh, Metabase Data because that's the uh, directory where the data will be uh, located in. And that's, uh, in fact, how the default uh, configuration of Docker is working. Then you need to run this following uh, line. So this following line is the one that you can find uh, over here. So where you clearly explain where you would like uh, your data to be uh, located. So here, as you can see, when you run uh, this line, it runs it with Docker. So in order to create a container where you will have your app running and then you need to indicate what is the port on which you would like your app uh, to be uh, shown. The thing is that uh, you may already have many apps installed on your server. So if uh, you have the feeling that the port 3000 is already busy, but you are not sure, um, please perform this given line, netstat, uh, netstat uh, tulpt which will uh, tell you in fact what are the app which are already running and on which port. So in my case, for example, when I run it, I discovered that the port 3000 was already used uh, by Mastodon, in fact. So uh, what I did is that I uh, changed it and I changed it uh, like this when I just informed about, uh, let's say, a port that I'm not using, so 3001, in order for my app uh, to run. So once you are doing this, in fact, uh, you get your uh, Metabase installed, but then you need the way in order to access it. And this is uh, where you need to, let's say, create your domain name in order to have a URL to which you can access to. So in order to uh, access to this uh, possibility, you need first uh, to create a SSL certificate because you don't want your website to be accessible through HTTP. So in order to run uh, the process to create the SSL certificate. If you are using Certbot and Apache, you need to run sudo certbot cert only d and then the name of your domain name that you would like uh, to create. And then it's going to create the SSL certificate just for this given domain name that you're going to mention here. Um, and then you need to go within a slash etc slash Apache 2 slash sites available where you will create a file ending in .conf 
And in my case, I'm using Apache and the content of this file uh, in my case is the following ones. So of course, uh, you change here your domain name.com by your domain name. Here it corresponds to uh, the port that you are going to use. So in my case, 3001. Uh, you need the same thing over here. And here you need to indicate the path to your SSL certificate when you change your domain name.com by your uh, domain name. Then you do exactly the same thing over here. And once uh, your uh, config file is saved, you need to activate it. So this is what you do if you do a2 and uh, site uh, your file.conf where your file.conf is the file that uh, you created. And then you need to restart uh, Apache. Okay, with sudo systemctr reload Apache 2. And then once uh, you are doing so, uh, then you can access to your URL. So in my case, my domain that I created is metabase.flossmarketingschool.com. And as a result, you have your metabase up and running. And then you can start uh, to create your dashboard and you can start uh, to share it and to have uh, the URL that everyone can access to in order to know how your, um, how your data look like. And that's it uh, for everything that I wanted to show you today. Uh, I know that it's not like a real uh, time tutorial about uh, how to install Metabase, but um, if you are already able to have your own server, probably you will already be able to already start to experiment the same process. It's always good to have kind of a second, um, a second documentation in addition to the one offered by the official um, doc from Metabase. And that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.